Hi, I'm Robert Osborne for the Movie Channel. Filming has just started in Washington State, my home state, on a new movie starring Michael Douglas, Kathleen Turner, and Danny DeVito, the popular threesome of Romancing the Stone and Jewel of the Nile. This time, Danny himself is directing the movie as well as co-starring in it, and the big news, it has nothing whatsoever to do with those two earlier films. This one is titled War of the Roses and is a comedy about divorce, a serious comedy. Much of it will also be filmed in Hollywood so Danny can work and still be at home with Rhea and family. I'm Robert Osborne for the Movie Channel. So, my task is, in an enclosed environment, to create the ultimate in suspense. To complete that task, distinguished action director George Cosmatos has assembled a superb cast to play the deep-sea mining team of Leviathan. When you look at a project, first of all, you, you count your own lines, and then you start thinking about the people with whom you're going to work, because most films are like signing up for submarine duty. You know, you're on board in a very intense relationship with people for uh, what is a short period of time, but in terms of, of, of careers is a very long period of time. And uh, uh, when they started to mention some of the people with whom they were uh, uh, negotiating, uh, hoping to get them into the film, I was very excited. Action! Complementing the excellent cast is an international crew of artists and craftsmen, rich in Academy Award winners. We mix 50 American and English people with the other 100 Italian people. Uh, you, you find that the level of, of, uh, of production all over the world now has come up to be equal to uh, what we've come to expect of Hollywood. And certainly here at Chinachita, which has a glorious history of filmmaking, uh, you're with people who are uh, extremely, extremely skillful in what they do. Still, the creature that stalks the underwater mining team of Leviathan wasn't born in Rome or at the cold, dark bottom of the sea. But here in Los Angeles, at Stan Winston's special effects facility, Winston is no stranger to special effects and makeup, and reminders of his past successes fill his studio. Well, the creature itself is, in fact, a conglomeration of the human beings that it feeds off of and then growth from there. At some points, this suit could take as many as 25 or 30 operators. Uh, there are a lot of things that happen. Facial movements that are radio control, limbs that are mechanically operated. To move one tentacle could take up to three to four operators. Um, and he has a lot of tentacles. He has a lot of appendages. Okay, we come up. Now Hal give it a nice good curl. Yeah, it throws its weight well. There's a lot going on. It's a very, very involved, intricate, complex, and busy, a very busy creature. I think more important is how this creature ends up on film, how well it performs. The less you show, the more the terrifying the suspense comes into the, the terror in the mind of the audience, much more terrifying. The shadow, the reflection, a piece here, a piece there. From TMC News for March 26th, Barry Levinson, even bet for this year's Best Director nod, set up house at TriStar Pictures. The move came in the wake of his new three-year first-look contract with the company. In a town where people change jobs, it seems as often as they do lunch, this story is about two men who have worked in the same place nearly 50 years. I'm Mr. Phillips, your deputy chief of police in the cemetery. Do you have someone buried here? When he was a stunt motorcycle rider in pictures, he was known as Wild Billy Phillips. These days, he is head of security at the Hollywood Memorial Park Cemetery. Most people just call him Bill, and he patrols the grounds in his blue Chevy Coupe grounds that cover 60 acres next to Paramount Pictures smack in the heart of Hollywood. Grounds that are the resting place for some of the town's most successful and famous residents, like actor Adolph Manju, who was also a member of Hollywood Post 43 of the American Legion, just like Wild Billy Phillips. Always smoking a new light Buick sedan. Always impeccably dressed by the perfect gentleman. Over right over here is Tyrone Power. There are thousands of people buried in this cemetery, and Thurston Gordon can tell you where all of them are. Of course, most visitors want to pay respect to their Hollywood heroes, and Thurston Gordon does not disappoint. 
He's offered informal tours for, well, quite some time. After World War uh, II was over, why, I was looking for a position, and there's something open here, and I came in, and they decided they could use me, and I liked the work, so I stayed. Stayed to guide movie fans to the modest headstone of John Huston, or the simple resting place of Nelson Eddy. This compared to the less modest burial site of Douglas Fairbanks, the tomb, monument, and reflecting pool reportedly paid for by ex-wife Mary Pickford. This mausoleum contains the remains of Marion Davies and her relatives, most recently nephew Arthur Lake, who played Dagwood in the Blondie movies. Just one of the attractions for busloads of touring fans. They walk on, look at the stars on the sidewalk on Hollywood Boulevard, and then they come down to see where some of them are buried here. One person who's come here as long as Thurston Gordon is this mysterious woman he calls the Lady in Black. Each Monday, she enters the cathedral mausoleum to decorate the crypt of Rudolph Valentino, who died more than 60 years ago. If he knew how, how many people were visiting him, he would really feel how important he was. After all these years, Bill Phillips is still amazed by the deep connection he often sees between fan and star. Very often, they'll look at the grave, and you can see that they're going back to the memories of the days when they saw them in pictures. Thurston Gordon and Bill Phillips have been a part of this cemetery longer than many who are buried here. When you bring up the subject of retirement, it's hard to get a clear answer from these two men who are both more than 80 years old. retire. I don't know whether I retire when they bury me here or I retire before. I'm not sure. But every day when I go home, he says, let's see that I get out all right. <laughs> we look after each other. Motion pictures were my fairy tales. I mean, I never read Hans Christian Andersen. When you grew up, as I did, during the Depression, when we used to go to a theater in Brooklyn called the New Broadway, where you used to get in two for a nickel, and they used to give you an Eskimo pop. And uh, you'd see uh, two pictures and two serials and cartoons. You'd be there all day, and then you'd sit for another sitting, and they used to send the cops in to find them. I would say the first film of, of many films that have made an impression on me uh, would have been Bambi. I think Bambi was, uh, I remember when I, when I saw it when I was about four or five years old. I was in love with Thumper's girlfriend, I think, until I was about eight. I was in love with a rabbit, you know. I remember I liked the I Love Lucy show a lot, and all the movies that were on at 4 o'clock when I was... came home from school as a teenager. But no, there wasn't one. The African Queen, I really... I remember. I thought that was a great movie. But I always remember, I mean, Captain Blood with Errol Flynn. The first thing you did, you got out of the movies and you found a stick. And you were dueling everybody in the neighborhood. When I was a kid, I didn't see very many movies. <clears throat> the town I lived in didn't have a movie theater. You had to go somewhere else to see a movie. And there was no bus service. So you either walked or hitchhiked or something. And there wasn't... But you couldn't do it anyway. And as a kid, to get a dime to see a matinee was very difficult. Wings, 1927. William Wellman. Claire Bow. Buddy Rogers, yeah. Richard Arlen, yep, yeah. Gary Cooper eating half a candy bar and taking off into the sky, never to be seen again, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you bet. I mean, I always go to that because I remember that so specifically when I was seven years old, I saw it on television. Um, I just remember transferring positions. <laughs> I remember being that pilot going up in that plane, you know, or I remember being a shooting star in that car, you know company is named Wings because of that, you know, but it, it, it was a very personal, personal form of entertainment, you know, and something that I wanted to be part of. Demi Moore. You're enjoying this, aren't you? And Emilio Estevez. Yeah. Aren't you? Are a couple of unlikely heroes. Oh, God bless you, son. In trouble. John Wisdom is a criminal, that's all he is. He's got a little out of hand. In Wisdom, playing Tuesday on the Movie Channel. Sometimes the happy hour is the unhappiest time of all. What are you good at? Uh, 
issues. What are we gonna do about us? Don't worry. Nobody's ever loved me yet. Faye Dunaway, Mickey Rourke, Barfly. Premiering Friday on the Movie Channel. Oh, my favorite movie line is, uh, this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Hey, everybody, it's Movie Channel.